Hello, welcome to the Thursday, January 7th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, only took a couple days, but we are seeing now active exploitation of the Cell vulnerability. This is the back door where we have the admin password that can not be changed by a user. So certainly urgent now that you're updating your devices. Not clear yet what they're attempting to do. At this point, we just see scans using the username and password combination that gives you access to these vulnerable devices. And well, adding uh, to this theme of parameter secure devices and actually add vulnerabilities, we got a set of advisories from Fortinet. For example, the FortiWeb a web application firewall that's supposed to protect your web application is suffering from SQL injection as well. And also from a buffer overflow and a format string vulnerability. Now, Forty Deceptor, which is Fortinet's appliance that uses deception, so essentially an internal honeypot, suffers from an actual vulnerability, in this case, an OS command injection vulnerability that could allow an attacker to execute arbitrary code. Lastly, FortiGate SL VPNs. Well, this is probably the least severe of the vulnerabilities. It does leak some logs from the VPN to different users. So if you are using one of these three Fortinet devices, please update. Haven't found any exploits out there yet, but I only did a quick uh, Google search, so there may already be more out there. Let me know if uh, you find anything. And in case you're still running your own mail server, you should be aware of an update to DoveCut. DoveCut is a fairly popular IMAP server used to retrieve emails. And uh, today a vulnerability was patched in this IMAP server that uh, during the IMAP hibernate uh, would allow users to access each other's emails. Now in order uh, to exploit this, uh, the user has to be logged in. So they have to have an account but uh, well still you usually try to keep different users apart on your mail servers and then just sort of the regular public service announcement that alternative pdf viewers do suffer from vulnerabilities as well i often hear people that sort of don't like to use the adobe acrobat or pdf reader just because it's known to have vulnerabilities well it's actually more a problem with a PDF itself that it's really difficult to write a decent parser for it. So today's vulnerable PDF reader is Foxit Fandom PDF. It uh, does uh, fix uh, five different vulnerabilities. Some of them can lead to remote code execution, but uh, one could also lead to invalid results validating signed PDFs. So a PDF would show out up as valid, even though it was altered. And Mozilla today released an update for Firefox that fixes a critical vulnerability, but only in the Android version of uh, Firefox. So just let the auto update do its thing here. It is rated critical. It can potentially lead to a remote code execution, but no exploit is available yet. Also Mozilla in the advisory states that they presume with enough effort it could have been exploited to run arbitrary code. So it doesn't look like an exploit is imminent here. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.